<laughs> oh, yeah. You know you got drunk when the next morning you're starting to think of things that you said. No. I have this memory of just walking down the street yelling and screaming the entire time. <laughs> I love Chinatown. See how many uh, pages I got done? So far, I've got yeah, right, actual writing. This writing paid for by Kickstarter. So anyway, that's the book that's coming out. We came up with a code name. Do you want to ask questions, or should I just start talking? DF Adventure. Budget. Budget. We need that. We might not need that. I think we gotta have food. Launch event. Hate to cut the launch event. That much for PAX Prime, really? Mm -hmm. I don't need that. We might not need that. We might not need, let's just say if we're being really mm -hmm. bare bones on some of the stuff. We're cutting so much stuff right now. <clears throat> Determining what stuff you're cutting. Uh, it's the things that like. Greg thought of. Everything I thought of is in, everything Greg thought of is out. Yeah, so I was being really conservative on like trying to figure out stuff outside of just paying the members of the team that we might need to pay for. And some of that stuff might uh, not be necessary. Uh, so it's... Well, it's tight for me. I mean, it's tight for me in terms of, like, the number of people we have on the team. Like, I wish we had more programmers. Okay, so if we did that. So if we cut out all those, some of those things, we'd have, like, another 100,000, which would be um, some programmer time. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. All right, and then we have how long to actually make the production until next November. Next November is like infinity far away. It's pretty far. That's, <laughs> we could do eight games in that time. Yeah. Sounds so long. Cut to November. What? The game hasn't started yet? Oh. Yeah. Wait. Done with, we're in alpha, oh, November this year? Yeah. yeah. Oh, we can't do that, that's crazy. That's insane. Start? Not even November next year. No. That I, sounds good. That would be a year and a half. <laughs> <sighs> November this year. Uh, that's much closer. Yeah. I mean, that gives us uh, you know, five, month, five whole months of production. Five whole months of production? <laughs> oh, my God. Well, I'm in an interesting position now because I'm running the company, so I, and I'm running a project. So on the one hand, I'm just I'm equal to the other project leaders, and I can't really abuse my ability to, like, pick up resource up and put them on a different project, but I do when they're not looking, so that's fine. All for the good of the project. DFAs can start any time, like now. Yeah, ostensibly like we're going to take somebody off your team to, to put them on DFA, and you're going to be shorthanded. Well, I mean, when you're a project leader, you have to kind of fight for your team. You have to fight for resources, and you care about the company overall, but you still know that to make your game good, you should get the best people on it. And so you kind of, um, you have to do a little recruiting, you have to talk to them you know, outside of meetings and stuff and be like, hey, are you interested? I think, you know, you'd be, this would be a good opportunity to you. You could you know, you'd be moving up or you'd be taking on more responsibility or we're doing this really cool kind of art or something like that to get people excited about it. Um, and mostly we just said that we were doing this project and most of the people like Anna and Brandon, you know, mentioned to me they wanted to, they wanted to work on it. Well, so the, I mean, I was a big gamer when I was a kid. Um, the, but like adventure games were always kind of special to me in particular. The fact that I wound up, you know, in a configuration where I could get to work on an adventure game with, a, you know, with my favorite adventure game designer is, is just is just crazy. It's still kind of mind boggling. And because the schedule is so tight on DFA and it's got such a small budget, that's that is a is a worry too. So it's is that true anymore though? We're gonna spend four hundred thousand dollars on. Okay. Shipping is $200,000. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm nervous, though. Why are you nervous? Well, because I really want um, Brandon on the team. 
but so do the other teams. So if he does something really awesome, I'm just going to get sad <laughs> if we then don't get him on the team. So uh, but basically over the weekend, I just wanted to prototype some, uh, some tools work. Me too. I just had it was Easter. I didn't, I didn't get around to it. But, uh, well, this, is, this is how I celebrate Easter. It's beautiful. Uh, so show you my super awesome adventure game here. Oh my god. Like, uh, I, didn't, it's, it's, I didn't know you could draw. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. So I, I feel like we're basically <laughs> done, right? Like, you know, so yeah, we just got to art this up. Yeah. Um, and so like, I started with the classic data editing thing, which is walk boxes. Um, and so like, got a little you know, walk box here. Oh, that's crazy. Like, look how accurate. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, now click out into outer space there. Oh, it's fine. Yeah. Let me see this. Let me see this. <laughs> Okay, so... Uh, oh, you're breaking the illusion. Oh, crash. <laughs> it was a really good puzzle. <laughs> Brandon is a genius and a great programmer and also someone who is a, like a, a deep love, a deep understanding of the low-level systems required, but also a real affinity for adventure games and tools and, and pipeline. So, like, this is honestly the stuff that, that I'm most excited about, right, is, like, you know, coming up with a tool chain uh, for, for everybody to use where, like, you know, whatever crazy idea that Tim has, we can get it into the game as quickly as possible, right, um, and, and actually see whether or not it works and, and tune it up so that it, it can be as good as it can be. So, I, I like being behind the scenes. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, programming is actually happening on the game. Yeah. All right, you guys. Cool. Awesome. That's cool. We're actually doing um, actual work. Should probably go design it now. All right. It, it's really nice to just get something on the screen. Like that's always the first step to like. It's very clarifying to, to you know have stuff present and, and actually interactive because then it's easy to figure out what to do next, basically. Yeah. Oliver. Hello. What do we got, man? It's pretty cool. This is a game? It's uh, kind of a game. <laughs> it does like already oh, nice. like, perspective. You're walking in 3D space. Well, it's like scaling it a bit, yeah, yeah. but uh, that's, that's pretty much how we're going to do it in the, in the final game as well. So all of these are flat planes, and you're just yeah. scaling the size of the character? Yeah. Um, and then we've got um, Oliver, and he's, uh, he's doing a lot of um, system work on on the engine and getting the engine kind of in shape. Well, I was born in, in Germany, of course, I'm from Germany. Uh, in fact, from East Germany. Um, so uh, because of historic reasons, I can be here today. Otherwise, I would probably be in Moscow some, right now, I guess. Like probably for a lot of people that work in the games industry, like from a young age, you know, always was playing games and was interested in the medium. Mm. It's certainly kind of strange to be here now to actually write an adventure game from scratch. Um, it's kind of cool. I guess it's what a lot of people in the games industry kind of dream about and would love to do. And it's kind of it's awesome to be here now at this time and like being able to be part of this project for sure. It's um, very exciting. <laughs> I should I should probably mention that this is not the final game, so please nobody freak out at this point yet. Well, uh, you know I've never worked with Oliver before directly. He's worked on Once Upon a Monster. And it's funny, he worked on the special edition of Monkey Island back at Lucas. Um, also, he's German. And if I have time, which would be awesome, like the actual dialogue system, so you can initiate like a dialogue with some, some other thing in the world. So um, what we're looking at is um, an implementation of, di of a dialogue sequencer. We have this database of lines. Um, um, so I'm just using that to test out my system. And so I wrote this little test data set um, that the red bots are going to insult each other with. And so here, let me show you what it actually looks like when you play it. Um, my friends had Nintendo. And that, that was that was the best for me. Like I remember, uh, I played a lot of Super Mario Brothers, and um, I mean that that kind of blew my mind at the time because um, when I was growing up, I was kind of the oldest kid, and I would come up with games to play with everyone else um, to entertain them and stuff. And uh, um, and I realized when I played Super Mario Brothers that. This was kind of the same thing. Like someone made up like this like little world for other people to experience and to, to uh, see, and he didn't even have to be there. And it was just like magical. It's like magical technology where I could do this stuff that I had been doing as a child. That was like my dream. I got my dream job somehow, basically. And she Anna has been implementing 
my dialogue longer than anybody in the world. What the hell is that sound? That happens every Tuesday at noon. It's not Tuesday. It is Tuesday. And then you hear this robot voice. Quack, quack. Where's the robot voice? Oh. Like, you can barely even hear that. What if that was saying, get out of the building? Like, I don't know. It sounds like, like our government has been shut down. You are all loyal servants of the... Okay. So I was saying, <clears throat> I mean, no one's had to implement more of my dialogue ever than Anna, probably, because she's been doing it since Psychonauts. And um, hopefully on this game, she, I mean, she, she's already... I haven't written a lot of dialogue yet, but she already knows kind of what I'm going to write structurally, and so she's already writing the systems to implement that. Um, so then we've also got Lee Petty, who is the art director. It's kind of hard to tune for unless you have. This is the old one, and this is the new one this and over. That's the old one? This is the old one, yeah. That's a little different than I remember it. I've pretty much been in the game industry since 1996, mm -hmm. constantly. Um, I was at Accolade for about five years, so I worked on a variety of projects there. Um, some of which shipped, some of which didn't. Uh, I, I actually was cursed. I don't remember how many years, but I think it was like my first three years in the industry, everything I worked on was canceled. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I'm like this, I can't get a single game on my resume. Uh, uh, luckily, games didn't take three years to make each back then, right? Yeah, Lee's been here for a while. He was uh, came in in the middle of Brutal Legend and took it over and made it look good. And he's been in the industry for a long time. I think if you, he, uh, if you look at him, you can see the, the, the wear on his face from the games industry. Now he's worked on the uh, games for a long time, and he knows he knows everything basically. He can he's you know he's run his own projects. He ran stacking all by himself. I didn't get involved in that at all. He wrote the dialogue for it. He did, he did everything. So we're lucky to have him on our project just for a little while. We're we'll trying to figure out whether we can steal him for good or not. But he's, there's so many other things we need him to do. Don't let him see this footage though, because he'll ask for a raise. Yeah, we're starting to get like uh, a team on the game. This is the nightmare team from hell, you guys. You've never seen a sicker, crazier team. It's, it's, I give him getting Wi Fi, but it's not connecting to Skype. Did you, you signed out on purpose, right? Yeah, because it, it went away. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Skype, Skype servers seem like they're going to hell. having issues. Mm -hmm. we'll get Okay, this is the first stand up. Is it exciting? It's not, we can't do it without Bagel. You, you can't get Bagel? Uh, internet's being weird. Should we just call him? Bagel, we're having trouble with Skype. Can we just speakerphone you in? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're doing it. Is that all the way up? Yeah. That's as loud as it gets. <laughs> Say hi, Bagel. Hey, everybody. Uh, and then we've also got, um, we've always had Bagel on doing like concept arts and backgrounds and stuff like that. But now we've got an art director on the project that will actually start trying to take those images that Bagel has made and, and figure out how to actually get them in a game and get them to be like working game assets. Uh, Bagel, Stapley, Nathan. Buddy. Bah, I like that. Bah. Oh. Lee, Pe Lee Petty is here. What's up? What's up, Bagel? Lee Petois is here. Can you hear me? How is it? Yeah, we can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh man, I haven't paid my property taxes. <laughs> so embarrassing. Oh. So uh, one of the main things I wanted to do was pick what you're gonna paint for Lee to mess with in After Effects. Yeah. Remember that? Totally. Yeah. So is that how we're gonna do it? Like we're taking layers, basically. The, the goal is just to just to get like the type of environment. You know, like maybe it looks like something the the player could could walk kind of left to right and have it scroll or into kind of either one we could yeah. explore. Right now he's taking you know. Bagel's work, and Bagel's not a very technical person, so he just paints these awesome paintings, but then making that actually look good in the game is a whole different thing, and so we've got Lee um, working on actually making that a, a realized uh, gameplay world, and it's really fun to see them working together, because they're so different, but they're putting together this, I think, awesome looking visual style. Yeah, those are just a, There's a lot of cabins in here. Here's a, here's a thing. Hey, that'd be a good one, Tim, that cabinet. So if you wanted the player to walk into into the screen there, like that's mm -hmm. a little slightly different, but similar to that whole circus uh, sequence in Monkey One, you just walk into that and the camera can move up to that top shot, basically. Mm -hmm. we, we haven't def designed in the actual characters yet for the game. Tim is still writing and coming up with exactly what the world is. So we just sort of picked a character out of one of Bagel's sketches and put it into the game. So. Um, and we needed to do, you know, we just needed it to move around. So I just did some some really quick animation on it. It's certainly not great animation, but just to get it to kind of move around the world. Um, 
and follow the camera. And so I think you know what you kind of get a sense of is how how the camera might follow the player and kind of lag behind the player, um, how he might move around the screen. And you'll see that one of the things we're doing here with this character is that um, as he's in this canopy, he's, he's kind of tinted green and darker, and as he emerges into the sun here, he becomes a little brighter. And um, we don't really have you know, any true lighting that's kind of painted into the painting, but um, I'm doing some simple things where we're using like color gradients based on the location of the world and kind of multiplying in this character, just with the goal of getting him to feel part of that environment. And that's a, a type of trick that we could do uh, technically in the game engine if we wanted to, and it's, it's really quick to do, but it's enough to help him harmonize with the environment. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Chris Remo to the company of the Double Fine. Chris Remo is our community manager. He's been here now for two weeks or so-ish. Uh, Chris, would you please stand up? <laughs> um, okay, any questions about any of that stuff before we talk about projects? Uh, I'll give you the update on Double Fine Adventure. It's an awesome game. Uh, I'm working on design stuff, and we have a team actually working on tools and engine and uh, visual uh, pre-visualization of what the art style will look like and I'm putting together one of my deliverables for the milestone in a couple of weeks is like a story document and stuff and at that point I'll be like probably sharing more info about the game with with other people company-wide. Well I mean Tim's been doing brainstorming stuff for a while um, and that's still what he's doing is just kind of holding up in his office and figuring out what the game is. You know, at the very beginning, I'm locked in my room a lot writing dialogue, but then um, kind of had the job of pulling this whole thing down the road. You know, so I was ready to finally pitch to the team. I'm not really, I haven't really felt ready to pitch to the whole company yet, and that'll come later, but so I pitched to the whole team. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the game today with everybody. And some people have heard about it, and some people have not. Can I talk to you about the game? Okay. Some people have not. Not just you. <laughs> there are several people in Wisconsin. Um, as you see, I've made a lot of progress. I've designed some monster design. It's good. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was going to go into some detail about some ideas for the beginning of one side of the story, just because it's the first example of like sample gameplay, and then we can all tear it apart. It's never, never, never going to work. And uh, it's an interesting process where. Um, deciding when to solicit feedback and when to actually sell. It's like sometimes you're selling and sometimes you're looking for feedback. And the idea... And early on, I could sense, like in the meeting, because we talked about that as being a, a feedback session about the pitch and stuff, I realized I didn't want any feedback right then, like any in-depth feedback. So I kind of pitched the game and then kind of moved the meeting forward and ended it because there is a, an early stage where you don't want any feedback because it doesn't really mean anything because they don't know still entirely what you're thinking. And they might have an image in their head, but it, it probably isn't exactly like what I have in my head. So I almost don't want their opinion of it because they're not talking about the thing I'm talking about. They're talking about their own, how they see it. Um, can I contribute to Devil's Advocate? I like where this is going. <laughs> um, the, to me, the strongest parts of this by far are the thematic aspects of the two characters in parallel. Especially switching between those I think can be incredibly gorgeous and, and really, really cool, both in terms of gameplay and aesthetics. And the stuff supporting that seems so high concept to me that it might end up being top heavy. Like it seems, it just seems like a really complicated thing. People you know, in that meeting can bring up any sort of problems, but it's, it's just too early. I dare them. Yeah. Nice try, Chris Remo. What were we thinking of inviting that guy to the meeting? Hey, maybe this thing you're doing shouldn't be done. Thanks. That's, I mean. I mean, I, I guess because I see it working in my head, so it doesn't yeah. seem that complicated. Yeah. I, think it's, yeah. I see that being like, just providing a structure actually to how everything has to behave. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, that's what, what it seems I do want is like when I say the idea, what other ideas that makes that person think of? like. Oh, you know what would be cool, and they, how they want to add to it. I love, I love hearing new ideas. I like Tim's a very um, 
a lot of times Tim, the way he describes ideas is is like like the fact that he described a box cover for a game that doesn't exist is a very Tim thing to do. Mm -hmm. Like he has he's not an artist per se, like visual artist, but he thinks very visually, mm -hmm. and I think that's helpful for someone like me. And it's probably why we work so well together. Is you know he's he's got these ideas, and I can sort of um, you know as he's drawing out the birthday cakes and stuff like that, and and that. Probably shouldn't talk about. As he's drawing out some of the ideas on the whiteboard in really simple fashion, I'm immediately starting to think about like, well, how's that going to put together from the space, and how could we emphasize that or make that work? And so, um, that's exciting to hear. Anyway, so you pick which side you're on. I've only been I've been working on this one um, <clears throat> a little bit, so I imagine it would just kind of scroll the boy off the screen, and she would be sitting here leaning on this tree on a hillside. My drawing gets worse and worse the more people are watching. Oh, tree. Are those her legs? Um, it could she's be. She's a tick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it turns out she's a tick in the end. Oh, this is that so hair. They're both human. They're human, yeah, yeah, yeah they're human. This is horrible. Anyway. Um, I think the idea is a really cool one. Um, I think visually, I think there's a lot of interesting stuff that we haven't, I haven't really had a chance to talk to Tim yet, but I think there's a lot of interesting stuff thematically that, mm -hmm. that um, is appealing to me. I mean, there's a sort of almost tale of two cities quality to it. I can see a lot of good ambiguity um, in, in the way that that story is structured. I think that's a really, would be great. And it'd be a way that we, from a, from a design and narrative way, have moved the genre forward a little bit. I want, I want something new to be brought to the table that wasn't there before. Uh, and I'm not sure what that is quite yet because I still don't have like a very clear idea what the game is going to be like. Um, but hopefully I can contribute to that. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I feel confident that and from a technology point of view we'll be able to do what is necessary. Um, I hope it's going to be good. <laughs>
uh, Empress was the sequel to Once Upon a Monster, or Twice Upon a Monster, it probably would have been called, but that got canceled. <sighs> but you still go there, it's important to go there and remember, pour out a drink for the canceled projects. <laughs> And last night we found what might be the last bar in Chinatown that we haven't named anything after, and that's Red's. Hey, you guys. Hey, here's to the Red's team. Red's. Red's. I think that's not bad at all. Red's. Code name. Reds. 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 